tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. It's kind of taken over my life. I've actually figured these last 10 weeks or so I've probably been more busy than I've been in my life. Um, we've been doing between three and four um, live broadcasts per week. And there's a lot of preparation that goes in beforehand and all of that. And I think we were just counting it up before we went on air. If I'm not mistaken, what was the grand total? Something like 270, 280 hours of programming we've done live since lockdown started. So I've been busy. Wow. Like I was telling Dodo earlier when I introduced him, I said, you cannot contain the creative spirit. <laughs> it's, it's actually... Is it a blessing? Is this curse a blessing in disguise? Because it's actually the gift of time. You reach uh, Filipinos all over the world, wherever there's an OFW or a Filipino community. Uh, V81 Radio Worldwide is here to serve them and to give them a taste of home. Because, you know, I, I used to live away also. I lived in San Francisco for a while. And everything that I could hear you know, experience from back home was always so precious to me. So I'm sure tonight, our Kabayans are going to experience some very, very unique moments with DJ John Robinson and Dodo. We're going to have a lively conversation. Actually, it began March 15, right, John? Yeah. Um, we, we call each other once in a while. Um, so he called me. Right at uh, the start of the lockdown, he says, um, no, I think I sent a video of the guys from Italy, right? Yeah, yeah. Then, we both did those doing that thing. Right. And then, um, um, of course, John being being John, he goes, why don't we do it? And um, we went straight to the mall and bought stuff. <laughs> and that, that evening was the birth of Sanctuary. This guy is so creative. We also need to disengage and and just and just let it go, and that was really the whole sort of motivation between sanctuary. I mean, it's in the name; it, it's our sanctuary. It's a place to come to to forget about everything that's going on in the world and to you know take you back to happier times and happier places. And that was the sort of the whole motivation behind the name and the the birth of the of the project. Right, and, I, I, um, I think the name is brilliant. I think the name is brilliant because instead of thinking that we're stuck at home, it's better to think that we're in our we're safe at home. We're in our sanctuary, right? And it's a brilliant name. Oh, thank you. That was fun. That was fun. I didn't know you sang, John. That was a surprise. Actually, um, my first album as an artist was here in the Philippines. Um, and I apologize for that one. I was still learning. Um, but when I was in Japan, I did seven solo albums. So um, I'm, I never consider myself a singer, but I'm a DJ who sings a bit. Then I get away with it. So I'm a DJ who sings a bit. This guy, this guy, he sings, he scratches, he mixes, he hosts, he does so many things. He dances. <laughs> John, he does so You're many things. You're embarrassing me now. <laughs> the tech, everything, everything. He does everything. I don't. I haven't seen anybody like him. But Dodo, really, uh, I have my hat. I take my hat off to you because um, among all the DJs in Manila, you decided to partner with John, and I think that was a great idea. What a fantastic partnership! Actually, I'm going. Some when this is all over. Um, something I've wanted to do for a long time is a DJ Academy. And it's not just to teach how people have to mix, because honestly, these days with the way that technology has come along, I can probably teach somebody to mix in a very short period of time, and then they just practice a little bit. But what I want to teach is the superstar DJs of tomorrow, because um, it doesn't matter what genre, whether it's EDM or whether it's hip hop or whatever, a DJ for me, needs to take command of the room especially yes. in, in, in this environment where the club scene is very competitive you've got to take control you have got to make sure that people want to look at you you know you're you're the reason that they're there they're your reason why club owners will want to pay you to come back so i want to teach them 
um, some of those aspects of the performance side as well as the mix side. But that's that's for later. It's something we want to do. I mean, I really get into it. I enjoy what I'm doing. But it's it's actually I was I never considered myself a retro DJ. Um, I play a completely different style of music in Japan, um, but um, it was probably seven or eight years ago. Um, I've been con contacted initially by some promoters in the States, and I was living in the UK at the time, and they wanted me to do um, retro gigs like I used to play in the Philippines back in the day. Um, up until that point, I'd never really thought about it because I... As a DJ, you always want to progress. You always want to push the envelope and move forward. You know, you, 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 you're looking not over your shoulder or in the rear view mirror, but you're just looking straight down the road. Um, but I was asked to do this. And, you know, of course, I know all the old music, but I saying, can you do an authentic rumor set? And I do hundreds of gigs a year literally not as many these days but in the japan era i mean i was playing every night sometimes two or three times a night i'm thinking oh my god what did i play in rumors you know what were the songs back there so i had to re-educate myself and and relearn uh, to a certain extent the music i knew but what was an authentic rumor set and i had to really dig deep and figure it out and so on so that was part of it and now um I'm kind of comfortable enough in my own skin that I don't mind looking backwards. Um, it, maybe it sounds a little maya, but it's not meant to be, but I figure that I've got to an age where I kind of, it's okay to look backwards. That's the history yeah. of what I've done. So it's okay to go forwards, but it's okay to go backwards too. So um, for me these days, good music is good music. It, it's Absolutely. as simple as that. And, and you, brought up, you brought out a very interesting insight that it's okay to look back and you know for many especially for our filipinos abroad i'm always thinking of our audience they always will remember their crazy days when they used to park in manila before they migrated and started their families and their work or with their businesses abroad and manila always had a very robust club life what i really found um touching was it's not just the great music and the entertainment and the lively few hours on a Friday or Saturday night that one can actually enjoy in one's home but it's clubbing the heart because uh, you guys have helped some of our kababayans during this uh, pandemic and uh... stay tuned for the next episode only here on V81 Radio Manila